pavements vendors ratan bhai a 35 year old pavement bengal seller consulted a lady doctor for painful micturition and increased frequency the doctor explained to her that because of severe summer heat she should take lot of water intake and watch for a few days actually ratan bai had the habit to delay urination as long as possible as the public facilities for women were far away and she could not afford to lose business as also in the slums where she lived there were no bathrooms or privacy to look after personal hygiene the doctor also did not inquire what was the work she was doing effective history taking has long been identified as a core discipline in treating patients spending more time compiling a good patient history has been known to provide the most benefit as compared to long physical examinations and expensive laboratory tests collecting an incomplete history can affect initial therapy and all subsequent decisions for treatment therefore it is essential that primary care physicians ensure that neither the patient nor the health system is unduly burdened by deficient history taking primary care providers and family physicians can play an important role in improving the recognition of occupational disease preventing progressive illness and disability in their own patients and contributing to the protection of other workers similarly exposed this role can be maximized if physicians raise their level of suspicion for workplace disease develop skills in taking occupational histories and also learn basics of advising prevention industry profile the total number of street vendors in the country is estimated at around 10 million some studies estimate that street vendors constitute approximately 2% of the population of a metropolis Mumbai has roughly 2 and 1/2 lakh street vendors and Kolkata has nearly 2 lakh. The street vendors market many goods such as clothes and hosiery, household goods and food items manufactured by home-based workers who have no other channels of marketing the products that they produce. They also ensure the availability of goods and services at cheaper rates to people. Currently, India has the largest population of street vendors in the world and will likely see a rise in their numbers as rural urban migration picks up speed in the coming decades. Given that poverty and a lack of urban planning often results in even higher number of slum dwellers in this country of 1.25 billion people with 51% of people in new delhi already residing in informal settlements both local and international development experts say india must prioritize improving the lot of its hawkers and vendors distribution of workforce the government of india has used the term urban vendor as inclusive of both traders and service providers stationary as well as mobile and incorporates all other local or region specific terms used to describe them such as hawker pheri wala rehri patri wala footpath dukandars sidewalk traders and more vendors largely fall into the following categories One, fixed location vendors. These vendors occupy a certain space on the pavement and assume the unofficial status of a shop on the street. Two, weekly bazaar vendors. Weekly hats or bazaars are a part of many towns and cities. The location of vendors who participate in weekly hats or bazaars changes every day. Sometimes vendors occupy areas in front of shops that are closed on their weekly holiday. 3. Mobile and door-to-door -door vendors. 
These vendors are actually hand cart operators who roam from street to street in a locality. 4. Mixed Pattern Vendors Some of the weekly bazaar vendors may also carry on vending in a fixed location during daytime, while some may also carry out mobile door-to-door -door vending in addition to vending in weekly bazaars. There also exists a category of vendors who do not make any investment on their own but help other vendors. Such helper vendors may take assets or goods from the principal vendors and sell them door to door for a fixed commission. Characteristics of Work In addition to work and income security, the street vendors face other forms of vulnerability at workplaces. 1. Vending is full of insecurity and uncertainty since vendors work at the roadside and accidents may occur at any time. 2. Facing police action A well-documented case of a pavement vendor in Mumbai who died after being hit by a policeman underlines the insecurities that these vendors face. 3. Working for long hours A study found that street vendors work for very long hours averaging 8 to 10 hours daily under extremes of climate amidst high levels of air and noise pollution which result in several forms of ailments like hypertension, hyperacidity or even diseases related to the heart and kidney. Often, many of these diseases are related to stress due to uncertainty of income. Female vendors are often observed to be the worst sufferers. 4. The workplaces of these vendors being public spaces, there is often no provision of basic facilities such as A. Shade overhead B. Availability of drinking water C. Washing facility D. Toilet facilities E. Place to take rest F. Access to first aid G. Availability of Illumination 5. Stress-related problems due to long working hours under harsh conditions and no stability of income. 6. Exposure to high levels of traffic noise for long periods of time. 7. Continuous exposure to air contaminants such as toxic fumes from leaded fuel vehicles released during street vendors' long working hours can lead to debilitating health problems. 8. A variety of skin diseases due to toxic materials handling or air pollution. 9. Vulnerability to cardiovascular problems due to under extremes of climate amidst high levels of air and noise pollution plus adaptation to easy available food that has high salt and oil content. 10. Poor eating and sleeping habits that lead to vulnerability to circulatory and gastrointestinal affections. 11. Poor sanitary and waste disposal conditions make these vendors prone to disease outbreaks and epidemics. 12. Poor living conditions Most of the vendors do not have formal accommodation and live in slums and cramped up spaces, making it difficult to escape infectious and contagious diseases. Health Problems and Disease Patterns Hazards related to health and safety are more or less shared by all these activities. Pavement vendors are prone to a large variety of health problems. Health hazards of these workers are described below with their causative sources and manifestations. Health Condition and Causative Source Dermatological Conditions Irritant Contact Dermatitis Occupational Dermatitis Causative Source 
several chemicals can cause systemic intoxication following absorption through the skin. Plant foods can be contaminated by pesticides under a great variety of circumstances and at different times preceding their consumption. Allergic Contact Dermatitis Symptoms subside after skin is no longer in contact with the allergen. Causative Source Most commonly inflammatory and colloidal allergic reaction to paraphenylene diamine in tattoos using henna. Folliculitis and acne form dermatosis. Causative source. Poor personal hygiene and cleansing habits. Injuries and musculoskeletal conditions. Pain. Acute neck pain and back pain. Causative source. Standing for long and adopting awkward postures. Varicose veins and varicose ulcers. Affecting veins of the legs. Causative source. Standing for long periods. Respiratory conditions. Allergic bronchitis. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Causative source. Atmospheric pollution is a characteristic of busy metropolises. Also, the greater the exposure to atmospheric pollution, the more likely a health-related problem might arise. Vehicular exhaust emissions, emissions from industrial source, open burning of waste and other material, road and wind-blown dust are known precipitating factors. Occupational asthma Causative source A variety of triggers have been identified the most common being the presence of dust or toxic sprays in fruits and vegetables. Packaging materials contain antimony, tin, lead and many other toxic chemical substances. Naturally occurring toxins can also trigger asthma. Also, too much exposure to the sun and stress also leads to the release of histamine, which can trigger severe bronchoconstriction and asthma. Tuberculosis Causative Source Unhygienic habits such as spitting in the open and drinking adulterated tea causing risk of bovine tuberculosis. Circulatory Conditions Atherosclerosis Causative Source Chronic stress leads to plaque buildup in the arteries combined with a high-fat diet and poor living conditions with no scope for exercise. Hypertension Causative source A poor diet that is high in salt and oil plus standing for long periods leads to stress. Poverty is stressful. The constant shortage of money, dangerous or unhealthy living situations, the perception of inferiority and the overall feeling of not being in control of one's life all contribute to the higher chronic stress levels. Genito-urinary conditions Urinary tract infections or UTIs Serious infections end in rare situations Renal damage Causative source Adverse health effects that may result from voluntary urinary retention include increased frequency of urinary tract infections. Women generally need to void more frequently than men. Ear, nose and throat or ENT conditions. Noise-induced hearing loss or NIHL. Causative source. Prolonged exposure to noise pollution causes ailments ranging from mild annoyance, mental tension, headache, fatigue, irritation, hypertension, gastric and psychological problems, low efficiency and traffic accidents to permanent deafness. Behavioral Conditions Depression and Anxiety Causative Source Recent life events contribute to the onset 
of psychiatric illness. Stress that is frequent or long-lasting can affect various parts of the body and can contribute to physical health problems. It can also affect one's psychological processes and behavior by changing one's brain chemistry. Gastrointestinal conditions Enteric fever Causative source Poor hygienic conditions Contact with possible carriers of the disease Poorly prepared or infected food and drinks Shigellosis Amoebiasis Gastroenteritis Diarrhea and dysentery Causative source Poor hygienic conditions Contact with possible carriers of the disease Poorly prepared or infected food and drinks Helminthiasis Causative source Unhygienic habits such as poor nail hygiene Poor washing habits Acid peptic disease Causative source Exposure to Helicobacter pylori through food exacerbated by regular eating habits Infectious conditions Scabies Causative source Living in cramped spaces Poor control or management of hand and body contact during vending Mosquito-borne diseases Dengue, malaria and so on Causative source Poor storage areas that may be infested with mosquitoes, garbage strewn on the street, which may give rise to mosquito breeding, stagnant pools or puddles of water during monsoon. H1N1 Influenza Swine Flu Causative Source Though direct transmission of a swine flu virus from pigs to humans is occasionally possible, the 2009 H1N1 virus is not zoonotic swine flu as it is not transmitted from pigs to humans but from person to person through airborne droplets. Unhygienic habits such as poor nasal hygiene, open sneezing, snorting and spitting and poor washing habits. Ideal recommendations for health, safety and welfare of scavengers. Protection of Livelihood and Regulation of Street Vending Act 2014 is an act of the Parliament of India enacted to regulate street vendors in public areas and protect their rights. The act came into force from 1st May 2014. There is also a national policy for street vendors in India. Your patients who are pavement vendors may be advised to look after personal hygiene and follow frequent hand washing habit. Preventive interventions require strategic contribution and efforts from government through occupational health and safety policy and legislation cooperation from employers as well as workers and advice from medical professionals. Occupational diseases manifest after long latency period from the time of exposure. There are challenges to establish and declare that a disease is due to hazard at workplace. Elaborate guidelines for management and prevention of occupationally caused diseases is beyond the scope of this documentary as currently there is no mechanism for doctors to enforce their recommendation without a statutory backing. We therefore give general principles of prevention. Preventive measures should be designed and implemented at three levels of prevention. 1. Primary prevention aims to reduce the occurrence of disease by eliminating the cause of disease, for example, use of benzene-free solvents or solvent-free paints to eliminate the risk of carcinogenicity or reducing exposure to safe levels that prevent it from causing damage, for example, reducing noise at its source to
to levels that do not cause noise-induced deafness. 2. Secondary prevention to identify and treat health problems as early as possible. Often, before symptoms have developed, in order to take corrective action. For example, regular audiograms among workers exposed to high levels of noise in the work environment. 3. Tertiary prevention aims to avoid complications of and disability from illnesses and injuries and or to provide rehabilitative and palliative care. It aims to minimize the consequences in persons who already have disease and depends on appropriate treatment. We expect that the primary care physicians are already well versed with clinical knowledge for management of the occupationally caused health conditions. To learn more about detailed clinical perspective, treatment and prevention and control, please refer to ebook or printed version of BOHS for informal industry, manual for primary care providers. So, if your next patient with any of the presenting symptoms we described earlier comes for treatment, please don't forget to ask him the million dollar question. What exactly is the nature of your work?